if I give birth to my baby in the tub, won't they suck in the water? Like, is there any concern that they're going to drown? And um, I think what we don't think about or we need to hear out loud is they live nine months in water. Getting pregnant and giving birth are two of the most exciting things you can ever hope to experience in this life. The moment you think you could be pregnant, you're frantically searching for all the best information, which is why you're here today. I'm Stephanie King, and with my many years of experience as a professional childbirth educator, doula, and lover of all things pregnancy, birth, and postpartum, I'm here to make preparing for your birth enjoyable, empowering, and totally easy. Each week, I'll cover different topics, interview professionals, and get into the nitty-gritty birth stories from mamas just like you. And when you're ready for more, you can join me in the My Essential Birth course at myessentialbirth.com, where I take you step-by-step through exactly how to prepare your mind, body, spirit, and partner for a birth you love. So let's get started. It's time, the My Essential Birth postpartum course is here. Whether you're pregnant, just got baby home, or weeks and months into postpartum, this is the course for you. No more wondering what's normal for your body postpartum, if baby's eating or pooping enough, or how to get a good latch. You now have an all-in-one resource where you can click a topic and get the answer. Learn more at myessentialbirth.com forward slash postpartum and add it onto the My Essential Birth course for even less when you bundle them at checkout. Already in the course? Check your student library and add the course for the same discount. I can't wait to support you on your postpartum journey. This week's reviewer of the week is Base Jumping Abby Gabby. <laughs> no, it's Abby G Baby. Base Jumping Abby G Baby. Okay, she says, absolutely incredible, inspiring, and empowering information. Stephanie, along with Courtney in early episodes, does an amazing job of laying out all the options a birthing mama has before, during, and after pregnancy. She does awesome information on how to choose a provider, what questions to ask, what different types of providers have to offer, pros and cons of all the different locations you can plan to give birth, how a doula can help, what is, quote, normal, and how to know when medical interventions may truly be needed, and so much more. I listened to this entire podcast from the beginning when I found out I was expecting. I am now holding my beautiful three-month-old daughter as I write this, and I remain inspired and incredibly thankful to have this podcast as a resource. I felt empowered in the decisions that I made throughout my pregnancy, and I was able to have the home birth that I dreamed of. What an incredible story. Thank you so much for sharing that. I really appreciate it. I have to say, I love the full circle and I love the details that you went into quoting all of those different things as I was like reading through them. I'm like, yeah, yeah, pros and cons and how a doula can help. And yes, those are all the things I feel like I'm talking about all the time. I love it. So thank you for that. Also, since you've got your nice three-month-old baby in your arms, and to all of those who are listening, you guys, the postpartum course is here. So if you have not checked that out yet, myessentialbirth.com forward slash postpartum. It's everything you need to know within the first year of life, starting with mom and baby, going all the way through breastfeeding and baby wearing and nutrition and exercise and everything that you can think of, it is in there. So if you haven't checked that out yet, please go do so. Um, And if you're here listening, and you are pregnant, myessentialbirth.com, and you can add the postpartum course on for just a minimal amount when you bundle those at checkout. So let's get into today's topic, which is all about water birth. Another topic that you guys requested, one of my favorites to talk about actually, and I haven't talked about it in a while, so I'm pretty happy to be here with you having this conversation today. Um, Let's talk about what it is. Water birth is amazing. I'm just going to throw that out there. I didn't know it was a thing and definitely did not experience it until I had my third baby. And I had that baby at home. And we did, since I had that baby at home, it was a blow up water. It was like an actual water birth tub, super big tub. Um, My midwife brought a liner. She sets it all up. We put the warm water in it once I'm laboring. It was heaven. So The great thing about water 
well, okay, I, before I get into all the benefits, right? But the great thing about water is it makes you feel so much better during labor, right? Like even think of having a bath right now if you're pregnant. Like, oh, it's just so relaxing. And imagine being able to submerge your entire body in nice warm water. It's heavenly. It's exactly what it sounds like. It is, and it can be laboring and or giving birth in the water. So I'm going to talk about both and kind of some benefits or pros and cons of both and what may or may not be available to you. But the great thing about it, water birth is considered and often called mother nature's epidural. And that is exactly what it is. Like if you are looking for something as you work through labor to kind of take the edge off or make you feel a little more comfortable um, or help you kind of like get your bearings and have a moment for like relaxation and pause and gratitude for everything that is happening. Uh, water birth could totally be for you if this is an option. Okay, so let's talk about some of those benefits. Kind of like I said, Mother Nature's epidural, it's going to be really soothing, really warm, really relaxing. Well, relaxing is a relative term <laughs> we're talking about being in labor. Um, and depending on when you get into, so if you get into the birth tub earlier, and sometimes they'll call it a laboring tub because you're not, quote, allowed to give birth in the tub depending on where you are, right? Um, if you're at a hospital, most of the time, they're going to say you can labor in the tub if your water is not broken, but you cannot push and give birth in the tub, we're going to require you to get out at that point. Most often, that is what is said. Your location may be different. Um, and I have seen birth done in the tub at a hospital under a trial basis. It just depends. So, and same with some women will be allowed to labor if bag of waters is broken and some will not. Most often not in a hospital setting. If you are out of hospital, whether that is at a freestanding birth center or in your home, they may or may not have either a blow up or a freestanding birth tub. Um, and that would just be a large tub full of water. And often moms are able to labor and or give birth directly in the tub in the water. So depending on where you're birthing, who your providers are, what is happening with your own body and safety and all of that kind of stuff, those are generally your options. Um, the great thing too, so you get in, it's going to lessen the body weight right away. So you're going to feel more buoyant. <laughs> um, it's less pressure on the legs and joints. I remember just that it felt so good to like get off of my feet and be in the water. So it can be, it can kind of take away some of those aches and pains or the heaviness of just your body during labor, which can feel really good. Um, the floating in the water or allowing your belly to be submerged in the water can actually cause better oxygenation to your uterine muscles and less pain for mom and more oxygen for baby. So all of those things are going to be positive. It can also lower mom's blood pressure, which may or may not be a good thing for you, right? But generally speaking, your your blood pressure can get a little bit higher under stress, under labor, whatever. It's just going to help you relax. Um, that also, as it reduces stress, we're talking about general stress, stress-related hormones, it allows you to produce more endorphins, which are going to be some of that pain relief. Um, so all of those things are going to be really positive. It relaxes the perineum. So that's that area between your anus and vagina that needs to be nice and relaxed for when it's time to push your baby out. That can be a really positive thing. Um, and because of that, it also just things being soft, um, you have a little bit more flexibility. Uh, all of that can lead to less chance for tearing and need for an episiotomy as you're if you're birthing in water, laboring in water, which is really awesome. And I think, too, when especially when it's used in a way, the reason we call it Mother Nature's Epidural is oftentimes it's used. So I talked about moms getting in to the birth tub earlier in labor, or I kind of like mentioned that there's some different times that you can get into this laboring tub. So you can do it early on. And this is like early labor contractions are starting. Maybe you're still like not even in that like strong active labor yet, um, but you're excited about the birth and you're excited about the baby and you're feeling like you'd like to be in water. You can utilize it earlier in 
labor, a couple of things can happen. Uh, it can, I, I actually get into the tub every time I have liked to, or at least my last two, I like to get into the tub during that early labor. And I like to just imagine what the birth is going to be like. I like to breathe through some contractions. I think I naturally kind of like take that time to connect to my body, to connect to my baby and kind of get in the zone. So I like that early time before things are like really going really right on top of each other. The other time, so, and with that though, so if you're using it earlier in labor, that can be a great way to utilize it. Also, the plan would be if you're going to utilize it in early labor would not be to stay there <laughs> for the remainder of that labor that you wouldn't just be in water the whole time. You'll probably get out after that at some point. Uh, it can cause contractions to go away. That is always an option. So when you relax things, maybe it relaxes away the contractions and early labor you can kind of not stall some things out, but slow the progress down. And that may or may not be a good thing. That may be what you need. And that's a great thing. Or you're like, shoot, we need to continue this for whatever reason. Um, so just know that that's something that can happen. Oftentimes when we're talking about using it as mother nature's epidural, it's because you're using it at a time when you would typically ask for or desire an epidural. So later in that really active part of labor. And that is, that's the other way I used it. So I didn't get into the birth tub at all. Um, I didn't have a birth tub at all until my third, but I do like to get into the tub early and relax and all that. And I did the same thing with my third baby. When I, when contractions and all, all of that was happening, tub, water felt really good. And then I didn't get into the actual birth tub until in my case, after transition. But a great time to utilize it would be coming up to and even during transition. So um, most often, I feel like moms are, they're going through the trickiest, the most difficult, the most strenuous, the most intense part of labor. And they're like, I need something like this is really hard. I'm working really hard. I need something. And that's usually right. Even if we don't have a birth tub, then it's like, okay, let's go in the shower, rub some stuff on your back. Let's do some counter pressure. Let's try massage, lay on your side, try this position, you know, all those things. This is just one of those tools that gets utilized. So mom gets into the water at that time and, ah. Oh, the amount of relief it provides. Of course, it does not. We talk about it taking the edge off, right? So it's not going to like, it doesn't take it all away. But the intensity scale, it just like, oh, you can like feel the difference. Mom can take a breath. She can maybe get back on top of her contractions as she was feeling like they were getting on top of her kind of thing. Um, it gives mom that space to, because the body is physically relaxed, now she can mentally focus, bring it all in take a pause, take some deep breaths, and get back to the hard work of birth. So sometimes, and our bodies are smart, they know what we need, sometimes that will, even in those really intense times, space those contractions back out, and there's nothing wrong with that. So let me say this for the moms that are listening to it that may be planning for this or have an opportunity and desire to use a birth tub particularly in a hospital setting, because you have to be careful in a hospital setting, understanding that stalls are natural and spacing out of contractions can be totally normal, especially when you're doing something like this. So I'm saying that because in a hospital setting, it is more common for them to want to, for your provider to want to see things continue, progress, get more intense, boom, 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 we've got a baby versus allowing the body to have some variation. And it's important that you know that because we, when providers maybe start like, okay, like looks like we got to get out of the tub, get things moving again, I want you to be able to tune into yourself and say, you know what, I actually think I need this space for a moment and I feel fine and my baby is fine, provided your baby is fine, obviously. We're just going to like, I need to, I'm actually really happy with this. I'm just going to let it all come. So I, I just wanted to like put that plug in there so it's in the back of your mind. But so contractions can 
space out. And that can be exactly what your body needs. Um, And then you may or may not be able to get things moving again and progressing while you're still in the water. Sometimes it will take, okay, all right, all right. I know that they're spaced out to five minutes now or six minutes now, and it's time to get things moving again. Like I have to step out of the water and get things moving again and maybe come back later. The other thing that can happen is um, it can actually speed things up. So sometimes moms get in the water and they're looking for that. It's not that it's not taking the edge off, but it's also because it's taking the edge off and because things are now able to maybe relax a little bit, open a little bit, stretch a little bit easier, things actually zoom. (laughs) And it's like, okay, here we are. It's go time. And I'm grateful that I have this little bit of an edge off as we're moving into this tougher part of labor and onto transition and having a baby. So those are probably, those are the most common times that you will utilize that, the laboring of the water um, and your birth tub. Uh, And some of the positive things, benefits that can happen with that, you know, along with the fact that we have, there are studies that show that moms that labor in water actually have quicker births. And I'm sure that there are a lot of factors related around that, right? Maybe moms that give birth in water are planning to go unmedicated. And so they've done a a lot of relaxation practice and labor rehearsal and whatever else, like in some ways, maybe they're more prepared. There's a lot of other factors that are there, just like, um, that all the all the statistics that go along with hiring a doula, kind of the same thing, right? Like if you have a doula there, you're less likely to, um, like you have a shorter labor, you're less likely to have interventions, all that stuff. And part of that is probably like your preparation for it as well as having the doula. So there's definitely some other things, but that's positive things, kind of like keeping your mind, put in your pocket, just have in the back of your mind that labor can actually be smooth and more comfortable should you choose to, if you are able to utilize a birth tub. Uh, for baby, I think there's some benefits too. And it's kind of funny. I I get this question a lot and I understand why it makes sense why, but I think it helps to hear out loud to the response to it. So a very common question that I get is if I give birth to my baby in the tub, won't they suck in the water? Like, is there any concern that they're going to drown? And um, I think what we don't think about or we need to hear out loud is they live nine months in water. (laughs) So it's actually, I understand because, right, once baby is born, we know they cry, we know they breathe and all of that stuff. I want you to remember that your baby is living in water right now, though. So it's actually a very nice, gentle transition. What they do um, is your provider will put that that water to baby's temperature. So it probably won't be as hot as you want it. (laughs) And um, it may even feel or it may feel too hot at times, depending on where you are with your labor, but they're going to keep that at body temperature. And when baby comes out, it's just that like easy transition. Remember that when they come out, they are still connected to your placenta and that is how they receive their oxygen and nutrients. So um, baby will make their way to the top mom, dad, midwife, whoever decides to, and any of them can grab baby and pull them up. Once they are up out of the water, they can't go back in. But once they are up out of the water, then they will breathe and cry and do all of those things. You can still, even within the birth tub, just be leaned back and have your baby on your chest up out of the water. They should give you a towel to wrap around you and baby. And then they can do all of the um, checking on baby, you know, um, getting the, what am I thinking of? The little thing where they like suck out their nose, you know, Uh, and they got the stethoscope. They're checking all of those things. They're still doing the Apgar. They're massaging baby. Like all of that can still happen on your chest just right there within the birth tub. So it's actually, I feel like that would be even less stressful. Baby coming out, even the sounds, right? Because being born and you've got your head out, (laughs) like outside of the water and like things are really loud and you were just in water and all that. But like, you know, when you come out underwater, like it's gotta be like a softer, gentler, okay. And then you hear, you can, you can hear the rest of the world in just a moment. Now risks associated with this, there is a risk of water aspiration. Uh, The risk is very low and it would likely happen on the way out if baby doesn't make it all the way out or there's some jumbling or whatever of the baby. So keeping that in mind, um, it's a very, very, very low risk and but also something to be aware of. Infection is another risk. So if the birth tub is not properly cleaned or there's something in the water um, that can make that unsafe, then 
obviously that could be a concern as well. Um, umbilical cord avulsion, which is a cord snapping or rupturing, which can happen in or out of the water. Um, but that can happen as baby is, you know, brought up by whoever. If for some reason it snaps, that can happen. Again, very, very rare. And then if that does happen, it can lead to a NICU stay or a blood transfusion. Um, we we looked it up. Cord avulsion rate is 3.1 in 1,000. And that is not specific to water birth. That is for all babies. So that has a NICU admission rate of 1.9 out of 1,000 and a blood transfusion rate of 0.4 in 1,000 births that are occurring in water. Now, I'm going to briefly go over what ACOG says. It is not a hard and fast, but this is the general recommendations from an important source. So ACOG, if we're going over their guidelines, they say immersion in water during the first stage of labor may be associated with so they have some positive things to say. Shorter labor, decreased use of pain medication, may be offered to healthy women with uncomplicated pregnancies, um, 37 weeks and up to 41 weeks and six days of gestation. They recommend birth outside of the water. They say because there is insufficient data regarding the relative benefits and risks of immersion in water during the second stage of labor and delivery, that's why they recommend it, which I think is important because just because there's not data doesn't make it unsafe. It doesn't make it safe either. But I just want to clarify that that is why they personally recommend not being in the water. And then it says for facilities offering water births, they should have rigorous protocols for candidate selection, <laughs> maintenance and cleaning of tubs and pools, infection control procedures, frequent monitoring while in the tub for mom and baby, and moving the from the tub if urgent maternal or fetal concerns or complications develop. So that's just a background of what ACOG recommends in the way of water birth. Um, and it'll be really important to speak with your provider about your specific birth, your specific situation, making sure that you work with a provider that you know, like, and trust um, in the way of how they're going to deal with any complications or anything that does arise. Like those are conversations to have prior to going into labor, obviously. Um, typically, moms that are going to be, you know, quote unquote, good candidates are going to be uh, past 37 weeks, that's typically what is recommended for if you're going to be giving birth in water, you know, for full term all the way there. Uh, one baby, singleton pregnancy, not that you can't give birth to twins in the water for a home birth and it would just depend on the midwife and, and you and all of that stuff. Um, if there's no risks to the baby, if you don't have placenta previa or anything else that could stop a vaginal birth, and obviously, if you have a desire to have an unmedicated birth, so those are all those positive things that can um, help you to get there. Now, you can also do water birth. Like you could have a, you can labor in the tub and also choose to get an epidural if you are at a hospital. That's totally something. If your birthplace offers that, you do not, you're not required to go unmedicated in order to utilize that. So that's something to consider as well. It is another form of comfort that can be offered to moms. So um, the the women that they're saying should not be doing this is if you are past 42 weeks, which again, <laughs> if you are out of hospital with a midwife that is able to be with you past 42 weeks, because remember in some states or and in a lot of them, if you go past that 42 weeks, then they do have to transfer you to OB care. So if you're able to be with a midwife outside of the hospital, um, 42 weeks, you can still birth in the tub most of the time. I know some midwives, it depends on how how they practice. Some, if you have a broken bag of waters, will not recommend you to get into the tub at all, even out of hospital birth midwives. Um, and others will say it's totally fine. Um, some of that may or may not depend on is there meconium or are there any other factors involved. But that's something for you to be aware of and something for you to kind of like look into yourself too. Am I comfortable with this? If my bag of waters is broken, am I comfortable in water? Um, and you get to decide how you want to give birth. But it, obviously, if there's any other risk factors that you have, like you have preeclampsia, um, undiagnosed vaginal bleeding, anything that is off in, in one direction or the other where it needs to be monitored or you're high risk or anything like that, then obviously that would not be... Um, 
probably something that your provider would be comfortable with or that would be the best idea for you for giving birth. However, that's why it's important to be with a good provider. So I am going to link within the show notes for this episode as well. I'm going to link those provider questions. If you haven't downloaded those before, like I said, they'll just be in the show notes. But we've got a list of questions for OBs and a list of questions for midwives. They're pretty much the same. There's just a couple of differences that you'll notice if you're looking for one or the other. I always recommend um, downloading both. Why not? And then you can kind of look over those questions. Sometimes we don't even think like we're just like, oh, like, OB, midwife, whatever, like, is there really a difference? Or I'm just planning on going to an OB because that's what I've always done. They who've checked my stuff every year or whatever the case. And then you read some of the questions from the midwives and it might get your, your mind thinking like, oh, maybe I do want a different standard of care, whether that's a different OB provider, because you know what would would happen if you ask those kinds of questions. Um, or you maybe want to to interview some midwives. But all right, let's get into some questions from Instagram. So yes, go download those things. But let's get into some questions from Instagram. So this Amy had quite a few questions. So I want to thank you for sending those in and I'm going to answer them now. Um, but she asked, when do you head into the tub? Okay, so I did answer that one during this, and it can be earlier and then come back later, um, or you don't have to come back, or we say later, and that can continue on to the birth, or uh, you can get out and give birth on the bed or on your hands and knees or just whatever, just outside of the water. So typically we say, wait a little bit later, use it as that mother nature's epidural. She said, how does the midwife catch your baby? Um, So you can catch it dad can catch it, baby catches it. They'll be right there. They've got excellent reach. They're just right on the birth tub, um, totally paying attention the whole time. And it depends on what position you're in as to like how baby will be caught and all of that. If they'll have to like help you, you know, zoomer through the legs or whatnot, if your hands and knees or, or whatever. So squatting, hands and knees, one leg up. However you decide to give birth, your midwife, what midwife will be right there to be able to help and assist and all of that. Now, what if I poop in the water? Such a great question. I know moms are concerned about this, whether we're talking about it happening in the water or a bed or anywhere else. If it happens in the water, it is so not a big deal. It comes out, they use a little fishnet, and they pull it right out. It's no big deal. Nobody says anything. It is very common. Don't stress about it. I totally pooped in my water. It wasn't a big deal. (laughs) And they did. They just took care of it. I never had to see it, and nobody said a word to me. So totally, totally normal. She says, should my husband join me in the tub? They absolutely can. Personal preference. I don't think my husband would have set foot in the tub. I didn't personally want him in the tub. Should you want your husband in the tub? And he's definitely brought his swim trunks because that would be a little awkward in his jeans and t-shirt or totally naked. Either way, probably not the best. So as long as he's got that stuff to be able to jump into the tub with you, yes, that is actually really common for dads to be able to get in there, be behind mom, give her that encouragement, massage, be something to lean on, all of those things. So yes, they can totally be in there with you. And then she, she asked how to know if there's a complication, like cord wrapped around baby's neck, Um, particularly because she said it happened with her first birth. Cords around the neck are actually not uncommon. So it is definitely something that every midwife is going to be looking for. Um, And so as baby is coming out, they're still monitoring. Like even in the water, they have um, the waterproof Dopplers. They're going to keep track of baby's heart rate. They're going to keep track of you. They'll be monitoring everything, paying attention to how you're acting, feeling, um, and they'll they'll keep track of you and they'll monitor baby. And then as baby is coming out, that's one of those things that they check for. And in fact, as baby's head is coming, they say, you know, like, okay, pause for a second. And they do a sweep around the neck. They want to make sure that there's no cord around the neck. And if there is nine times out of 10, it's just going to be they just slip it right over baby's head. And then they say, okay, go ahead. And you can have that final push. So most often that is really not a cause for concern. If there are any other complications or concerns that are coming up during that laboring process, they will have mom get out of the tub and they'll take care of it just right there. So nothing to worry about um, whether you are in the hospital or out of a hospital. Midwives are trained in order to be able to make sure that mom and baby are safe. And there are many signs and, and things. Rarely is it an immediate emergency. And if it is, then you deal with it, you know, right there with skilled providers but most, more often than not, you're going to have some kind of warning sign, something that are, that's giving you a heads up that it's time to transfer, whether that's 
outside of the tub or out to a hospital or whatever the case. So make sure, um, don't worry so much about that. It really is like you're with a good provider that you trust. <laughs> you trust their skills and their professionalism. Um, and you just worry about the birthing part and they will let you know if there's any cause for concern and, and they're there to keep you and baby safe. And then this one comes from Faith. She says, if the cord isn't long enough to bring the baby up, do you get out of the tub right away? And that actually is a good question. My cord, I could not get my baby to my chest. He had a very short cord. So I was actually like leaned over and tilted back. So I had like a curved back and I was tilting um, just a touch in order to hold him out of there. So it was a little bit uncomfortable, but it wasn't the end of the world. Um, if it is so short that you can't bring the baby up above water, which would be a very short cord, then in that case, yeah, they would help you stand up and mom and baby would get out of the water. But um, mo most often than not, that would not be the case. And yes, they would probably have you, they'd either have you stand and wait for that cord to turn white and stop pulsing and cut, or they could have, they could help you lift out of the water with baby. Just depends on the whole situation and what would be safest at that time for mom and baby. But either way, yes, they'll get it all figured out. Overall, I, I think hopefully what you gathered here today um, realizing that some hospitals offer water birth. It's very rare that they allow you to birth in the tub, but they, if they do offer birth tubs, they'll be more like laboring tubs. Uh, and then if you are looking to have a baby in the water, that'll probably happen out of the hospital, whether that's at your home or a freestanding birth center. There are a ton of benefits to birthing in water um, or laboring in water. And like I said, we can utilize it early to kind of get in the zone and you can utilize it late to take that edge off, to um, keep things moving or to get that break. But generally just to feel a little bit more comfort and ease for the laboring process. And there are a lot of positives to water birth. So if that's something that you are interested in, um, definitely look around, see what is near you, reach out to different hospitals, different birth centers, um, and see what they have available. And I always say too, like, look for your local doulas, look for your local childbirth educators. Those are people that you can reach directly to and say, hey, I'm a mom in the area. This is what I'm looking for. Um, do you have any idea where I could go or, or who, you know, how I get connected here? Even if what they're doing is sending you to the local Facebook group page or whatever, um, that's a really great place to start. So I hope if you are considering water birth that this has been super fun and informational for you. And I will see you next week. If you loved what you heard today, the very best way to support this podcast and help other moms to find it is to leave a quick review. I read one at the beginning of the episodes and I would love for yours to be next. And if you're ready for even more pregnancy, birth, and postpartum goodness, come join me in the My Essential Birth course at myessentialbirth.com, where I will hold your hand and walk you through pregnancy and birth step-by-step step so you're totally prepared for a birth you'll love. See you next week.